What's going on guys? Keith, two guys how to. And uh, got a request from Big Kevin wanting to get this uh, Suzuki. It looks like a little 50. I'm not sure, maybe a DR50 or something. Uh, four cylinder. Uh, he wants to get it running for the kids and they want to put training wheels on it. So I figured we'd shoot a video today just showing you the basics on this unit um, or any other unit, dirt bike, motorcycle, whatever's been sitting around, go-kart. Uh, that's been sitting around for a long time um, just kind of not saying it was uncared for but just kind of left to sit until they're ready to use it again this particular unit um, has a kick start uh, I don't see any electric start on it. it's got the kill switch the kick start here spark plugs up in the very front um, and the carburetors on the side so what I was gonna do is uh, basically uh, put some fresh gas in it and uh, clean the carburetor, clean the spark plug off or replace the spark plug. I'm probably just going to clean it with a wire brush and some sandpaper and some cleaner. And we can, while the spark plug's out, we can actually check for spark to make sure that the magneto and everything in here is giving the fire to the motor. Once we know we have spark, then we can go on to the carburetor and clean it and get that thing officially cleaned out. Fresh gas in the gas tank with spark and gas should start. So let's get started. I'm going to go and get a spark plug wrench. We're going to get the spark plug out. And we're going to go ahead and test for spark and I'll show you how to do that. And on this particular unit, it's been sitting for a long time. Um, you know, I'm not going to get discouraged over it at all. I think it's going to start up. I know it, it ran before they had stopped working on it. So what we're going to do is uh, first we're just going to check for the spark and we're going to take uh, the spark plug out and test it. So let me get you guys situated over here where you can actually see what I'm doing. And get you guys right down at the angle where you can see me doing what I'm gonna do so you can do what you're gonna do to make it match up. Basically, you got your front tire and the front cylinders right here. And let you get, get you guys over a little bit more right up and personal. And uh, you got your front cylinder here, your spark plug and your spark plug boot. Let's just gently pop that boot off right there. And we want to check the boot, make sure it's tight, make sure it's not spinning around on that wire. If it is, you can always give it a, a rotation of clockwise to tighten it up. And we've got our plug right there. Boom, boom, boom. Looks like a 13 16 So I got a 13 16 socket on here. And let's go ahead and gently take this out. And it was actually a little loose, which I don't like because you can get moisture in the cylinder. Let's go ahead and just pop this plug out and just kind of see what it looks like when it comes out. And you can just see, man, that's, it's, it's got a little bit of rust on it. But uh, that's okay, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up. We've got a drill and we've got some sandpaper here drop you guys back just a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and take some sandpaper and I'm just gonna fold it in half so it'll fit up inside the electrode right there and it should go up inside there and we're just gonna go back and forth with that get a little bit clean that way we'll clean off the connection I'm not worried about that little bit of rust We'll get that with the wire brush on the outside. And we'll hit a little bit right here, just on the top of the electrode. And you can see it's starting to bring back that color. So I got a wire brush on my drill. And I'm just gonna hit that and clean it off until it looks like shiny metal. And we're gonna go ahead and just give this a little spray of this CRC, uh, it's a parts cleaner. And it's non-chlorinated, so it won't hurt anything. We're just gonna go ahead and clean that off.
and you can see a big difference of the shine in that in the sun right there. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep this out. And we're just gonna go ahead and plug it right back into that spark plug boot. And if we hold that to something metal, some good metal and we kickstart this, we should get a spark in it. Let's see if this particular unit has gears on it. I didn't even check. Let's go around to the other side. Let me just make sure this bad boy's in neutral. Yeah, this unit, it's uh, it does have gears, so let's just double check, make sure it's in neutral. That way when we kick it, it won't try to move forward at all. All right. So, the unit's in neutral. I'm gonna put a little WD-40 up in the cylinder, just cause this unit hasn't been run for a while. And that piston going back and forth, I don't want it to score the cylinder. You can hear it now, it's, it's freed up a little bit better. So, if we go ahead and we touch this spark plug to part of the metal, on the frame that's grounded, any heavy part, I can check, look down in here for spark. Yeah, and I'm seeing spark. And I can show you what I'm doing here. Get you up and close and personal again. Basically, I'm taking that spark plug and I'm just gonna touch it to this bolt right here on the motor. And, and now since we have the spark plug out, it's, there's no compression in the motor. So when you, when you hit the kick start or you hit the electric start, it'll spin freely without starting. It can't start without the spark plug and we can look right here and make sure there's a gap of spark. And I can see it arcing right there. It's not as heavy as I want but I don't have any of these spark plugs. We might have one. This is a, B, a BPR4HS. We'll see if we have one of these in the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean off the tip of this one more time. And just lightly set it in there. Because when we go ahead and start it, we're actually gonna put a little gas in the cylinder. Uh, see if we can get it to start that way. If it won't start that way, then we'll go ahead and go onto the carburetor. So let's go get some gas and put it down in that cylinder. I'll show you how you can check it real quick. Okay, so uh, we went ahead and we checked the spark plug and uh, we are getting some spark. So I got a little bit of gas in this container right here. I'm gonna take that spark plug back out that was hand tight and uh, squirt some gas down in the cylinder. This is going right in right into where the spark plug goes and I'm gonna drip a little bit on the spark plug itself. And we're gonna see if we get some ignition on this unit. So now we got gas down in the cylinder. We're putting the spark plug back in the cylinder. If we get spark inside that cylinder in that combustion chamber, it should start up. Now whether it runs for a long time, uh, we don't really care about. We just wanna see if the mechanicals of it um, we'll start before we start getting into the carburetor and all of that. So, got that tight, spark plugs in, spark plug boots back on. We can go ahead and try to see if it starts. So, we've got compression, it starts up. Sounds like it might have an exhaust leak, but uh, we're good to go. So now that we know it starts up and runs through the motor and the clean spark plug, let's go ahead and put some fresh gas in it. All right, guys, so I uh, went ahead and I researched what kind of bike customer Big Kevin wasn't answering the phone. And I wasn't sure if this was a two-stroke or a four-stroke. To me, the motor looks like a, uh, an air-cooled uh, four-stroke, which means that the oil and gas is not mixed, it just runs on straight gas. But I went ahead and uh, looked it up, and this is a JR50 uh, with the kickstart. It is air-cooled, uh, no radiator, no liquid cooling on it. 
but it actually um, is a two cycle motor. Two cycle means that you've got to mix the gas with the oil. Um, on this particular unit, it has a little reservoir underneath here, I believe so. So we're going to put straight gas in the gas tank and we're going to put the oil mix in here. Let's go ahead and take this cover off here just so I can see what's under here. I do see a tube that's running down into the motor, which would inject, uh, leads me to believe that it would inject oil into the, the motor so the piston won't seize up when you're running your regular gas. So let's go ahead and take this off. This just has a little screw on the side. Uh, it's like kind of like a wing nut, but it's permanently stuck in here. And lo and behold, here's our tank. So this, this is our fill tank here. We're gonna fill this with two cycle oil. We're gonna put regular gas in here. The two cycle oil is gonna get pulled in by vacuum into the motor while it's turning while it's injecting the regular gas to the carburetor. They're gonna mix in there and it's gonna cause this motor not to blow up. So, I'm glad I researched it. You always wanna research before you go ahead and do it. If you put two cycle uh, mix in here with the gas and oil mix, and you had oil here, before it's come to worse, you're gonna foul the plug, but you're not gonna blow the motor up. So, let's go ahead and take this little reservoir off. We wanna make sure, a lot of times we bypass these because if it ever, fails and falls short of injecting the oil in, you're gonna blow the motor up. Uh, Kevin's not here to ask how they run it, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up with some good premium two-cycle oil. I use the, the Lucas uh, Semi-Synthetic. You don't wanna use some cheap weed eater, uh, two-cycle gas or something like that, you're gonna end up harming this motor. You need something that's got really good friction additives in it, low ash, it's made for dirt bikes. This is, this is made for smokeless low ash. It uh, meets the ISO. Um, and the GD and all the other requirements that they've got listed and it's a semi-synthetic high performance. I like the Lucas. Uh, they don't pay me to say it, but I've always used Lucas stuff and watched their company grow over time because their, their additives really, really are good quality additives. So we've got a little funnel. I took the cap off of the, the, the holding tank here that holds the two cycle. And you're just gonna pour this straight in there. Let's just go ahead and give them a little bit of freebie uh, and every time, you know, you might want to check this every time you fill up the gas tank if you own one of these. As this gets lower, as your gas tank runs out, this oil is going to get low. I haven't ran one of these, but filling that, that reservoir up, it could last for three, four, five gas tank fulls. I don't know. You'll know once you fine tune the unit, the kids are out on it. Every time they need gas, you go ahead and you check this oil tank and fill it up. So let's go ahead and get this cap back on. Get this tank pushed back on there. There's a stud right there that holds it. And there's another stud that goes through the tank right here where that wing nut goes up in there. So let's go ahead and put this cover back on. You gotta kinda get this little number tag back up in there. And it snaps in and it has another snap up here underneath the gas tank. And one back on the rear fender there and you just tighten that wing nut back up and it's got a slot in it for a flathead screwdriver uh, we don't need it but if you had to you could just go ahead and tighten it with the flathead you don't want to over tighten it just snug it up so now since we've got that in there let's just go ahead and put some regular gas in here and i'm actually going to use uh i've got some two cycle mix it's already pre-mixed and i've got some regular gas since I don't know if this injector is working just on trial and I can't talk to Kevin and find out if this reservoir is uh, good or bad, if it's injecting, I'm going to go ahead and use my two cycle mix in the gas tank for now instead of using regular gas. Just because I don't know about this motor, I would assume it works right, but it might not work right and I don't want to blow their motor up by trying to uh, fix it. dripping a little bit but that's fine we want enough in there to where yeah it looks full looks good like it's got a lot a lot of gas in there and uh, I'm running a 31 to, uh, 30 to 1 mix 32 to 1 mix just because I don't want to I don't want to blow their motor up if I know if he says yeah the oil injectors working fine then I'll go ahead and change this gas out and just run straight gas. But until I know this oil injector is working as it should, I'm going to use a mix of a 30 to 1, 32 to 1, something like that in the main gas tank. So we've got that in. 
we've got the plug in, we cleaned the plug. Let's go ahead and see if we can start it. Um, we're gonna turn the gas on. We've got the gas over here. And it's the fuel shut off, the petcock shut off. And it's a little, little lever right here on the side. So let's go ahead and just move that down. Try to follow the arrow. The arrow will show which way the gas is gonna go. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move that lever straight down towards the arrow and it's gonna go into the gas line and it should fill, in theory, it should fill up that carburetor. So, now that we got the carb full of gas, spark plugs in, the boots on, carburetor should be full. We could double check it by taking this little screw out of the bottom. If it's full, it should drip gas out if it's getting gas. I'm not seeing any. So chances are this carburetor is, is super gummed up and dirty. But just out of curiosity, let's see if we can kick it. It's got a choke lever right here. It doesn't seem to really be working. Down is on choke. Let's go ahead and just kick this thing, see if we get some fire. Yeah. And we can check this bowl again to see if we're getting any fluid in there. The reason why it started up, it started up from that gas we put inside that spark plug. I smell it, I see it starting to come a little bit. Let's go ahead and try to kick it again. just because it needs vacuum to pull it through. Let's go ahead and take it off choke this time and fire it up. Give it a little bit of gas. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna check the oil. Let's see if this has a dipstick on it or not. No dipstick. You really should drain the oil and fill it back up to the proper uh, requirements. It should say right here how many uh, millimeters. It takes 450, 450 of fluid. And you'd have to have a, I got my measuring cup back in the shop, but uh, let's go ahead and choke this one more time. We're gonna assume the right amount of oil's in it. I'll drain that later or do it on a different video. So we know it's starting with the choke on. Let's try it again. Take it off choke and see if it fires up. Sometimes you can get lucky on these two strokes where the carbs won't be that dirty, but. Let it warm up for a second. Yeah, you can see when I shook it, it just cuts off. So let's try one more time.
idle. Just trying to idle. I think we're good without punching the carburetor. Um, if this was a standard gas carb, let's shut it off. If this was a standard gas carburetor, we would definitely have to go in there and clean it out. But uh, I'm going to fill the tires up. I'm going to check the oil. Uh, we know we've got two cycle mix in here and we've got the, the oil injector here and I'm going to mark a level on that with a magic marker lightly and just to see if it drops down as they're driving it around the yard and if that oil level here is dropping down as they're driving around the yard then I'm going to know the oil injection system works right. But for right now the choke's working, uh, down is on choke, up is off, the kill switch is working, the throttle's got, uh, it's got good snap back to it. You can hear it, so I don't think the carburetor's gummed up in there. We checked it, we got gas that's starting to come out of this bowl. The main thing was probably their spark plug was just beat up, dirty, and old. Uh, you always wanna have a couple of those on hand, especially if the kids are cruising around the yard and it kinda cops out on you. You can always swap the spark plug out and they'll get a good bunch more hours run time. So let's go ahead and get the air tank, fill these tires up and see if this thing scats around the yard. All right, so I've built the tires up, lubricated the chain, and uh, let's see if this thing will pull my, my big butt around here. All right, so it's running idling, but it has no pull power, so let's get this thing back on the bench and clean the carburetor out. All right, so this thing's bogging out on us and it's not able to pull my weight. So let's go ahead and just clean the carburetor, which I kind of anticipated anyway. Uh, let's take the side cover off where our oil holding tank was for the two cycle oil I showed you earlier. Let's just go ahead and take this cover off. We're gonna set it to the side. You've got your air cleaner here, which is just not even really a, a full blown air cleaner. I mean, it's good enough for this little thing. And you've got your, your little manifold that comes up off of your cylinder and there's a screw right there. So let's go ahead and, uh, and I can kind of try to show you guys this clamp system they've got going on here. It's a screw right there. And we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and loosen that up. And that carburetor will pull out from this little intake manifold and hopefully we can get the whole thing out. So, All right, so let's get this back where you guys can see what's going on. And I'm just gonna wiggle this carburetor back and forth. And you can see it pulling out of the a little intake manifold. Let's see how far we need to pull it out. Hopefully we got all the throttle cable hooked up still. Let's go ahead and turn the gas off first. that's off it's hard to see on this little bike let's see if we can just get it so now we've got it popped up off of here you know th this little this little uh, bike I'm gonna see if I can lift this gas tank up here a little bit I don't want to take the whole fairing off but I figure we could try to pop it up but it, it's okay we can still see it we're gonna leave the throttle cable hooked up. We're just gonna go ahead and tip it on its side like this. I got a drip pan here, some cleaning brushes, an old toothbrush, and some wire. So let's go ahead and put this drip pan right here underneath of it. And let's drain this bowl, see if there's any gas even that's getting down into this, this float bowl here. Watch out, there's a little gasket on this screw here. And if you lose that little gasket, it's not going to seal right. So let's go ahead and turn this thing to the side. And you can see there's barely any gas coming out. It should just be dumping out up out of there. So let's put the screw back in with the gasket, gently tighten it, just snug it down. And we're going to take the bottom of this carburetor where the float bowl is off of here. So we've got a Phillips head screwdriver and you've got one, two, three, four, screws there. And let's get you guys down and personal. 
so we can you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and get you lined up and you've got four screws under here I'm gonna go ahead I've got my drip pan here I'm just gonna go ahead and spray the outside of this carburetor that way when we open it no dirt's actually getting inside there so we got that, we got our Phillips head screwdriver. Let's go ahead and gently take these bolts out. And it's easier to take it off the whole bike and take it to the work table. But uh, I don't want to unhook all the linkage. I think we can get to everything just from the bottom here. And it should be fine. And just lay these screws out somewhere where you, you know, you don't lose them. And you know how they go back in. You can take pictures of everything if you want. And some of the screws are actually loose. I'm surprised it's not leaking gas now. And maybe it was at, when it was sitting in their garage or in the shed. All right, so we got the four screws out of the bottom. And I'm gonna gently tap on this, this float bowl right here. And it should pull down off of there. You don't wanna rip it down off there because there is a gasket in there. Let's see if we can gently get it off there and double check, make sure we got all the screws out. One, two, three, four. It should just come out. Boom, and you can see tapped on it and there's a bunch of, of just nasty stuff up in there and I'll dump it out so you can see you see this big chunk of stuff right here and you can see all that just it's just looks like fish eggs though right here where the screwdriver tip is all that was inside the carb and it's just gonna clog up that jet the main jets so we've got our float bowl off the gasket's still on there, it's intact. We're not gonna mess with that. We are gonna take a little bit of this cleaner, spray down in there. And this non-chlorinated cleaner, it won't swell your gaskets and ruin your seals. And we're just gonna take that toothbrush and just gently get down inside there and clean up all those little fish eggs and the floaties down in there. And let me turn this so you guys can really see what I'm doing here. see with that toothbrush I save all these old toothbrushes and I bend them and we're just gonna spray some of that cleaner down in there and just get around the outsides dump it out spray a little more in there dump that out let's spray a little bit more in there and go back in with this toothbrush and just make sure we get all of the little crusties out of the bottom there. Be careful not to hit that gasket around the top of the, the bowl there. If you have a rebuild kit, it doesn't matter if you hurt that gasket. We don't have a rebuild kit. So we just want to be gentle with it right now. And it looks pretty clean down in there. Oh, actually there's a little bit more right around the outside here. Right down in there. So let's try it one more time. Hit it one more time. Hold it upside down and hit it. And let me really get down in that little bottom of the bowl right there. It seems to be holding a lot of the stuff. And I hold it upside down. Let's get it all out one time. Let's look down in there. Oh, there's a couple floaties right there. All right, we're gonna set that to the side. And get back up into this carburetor here. You can see we've got this, uh, this float right here. And there's a main jet. There's uh, your needle seat jet in there. And it, 
just kind of snaps in a little pin. It's hard to, hard to do it by myself and, and show you, but I'm gonna spray off all of this just to get the dirt off of it. And there's a main jet right here in the middle. Let's go ahead and blast up into there. And we're actually gonna take that main jet out. And it's actually pretty loose too, I'm surprised. Uh, maybe someone's been in here before and didn't tighten things down. And it could be sucking air, but you can see that main jet. It's just all, all gooed up and it should have holes in the side. Let's go ahead and take our, our uh, toothbrush and just clean the outside so we can expose it. See if there's any holes that are, go through there. And there are, you can't see them in the camera, but there's a bunch of little holes. So I've got a piece of uh, speaker wire, stereo wire or automotive wire. And we're gonna punch through those holes. Man, this is a small carburetor. I don't even know if the wire will fit. Let's go ahead and try to spray down in here first and see if anything comes out the bottom. A little bit, not much. And you can see, you can see all the way through it right there, both sides. If I look through, I should be able to see the camera in there. Let's go ahead and run that wire up inside there as well. Some of these smaller carbs, even my speaker wire won't fit. You gotta go and get some uh, other automotive wire and strip the strands and get the skinniest strand out of there, which I think is what I'm gonna have to do. Because you can get these carb, these little brush cleaning kits on Amazon and everywhere and they'll go up in there, but they're not gonna go all the way through it. They'll go up inside one, one, one side of it, but they won't go through the other. So let me go get my other, my other wire brush and, and get up in there one sec. Okay, so uh, I've got the, a piece of wire and I went ahead with my wire strippers and, and stripped off the end. And you can see this is uh, single individual wires in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab one of them. I'm gonna fold the rest back, but I wanna use one of these wires. I'm gonna clip the end so it's nice and straight. And I'm gonna use that to push up through this uh, needle check here. This is your main jet. So, and it's got little teeny holes on the side here. Let's see if we can actually push this thing through. And it's hard for me to see it even out here in the sunlight. But you can see now that I've got the wire th through it. Whoops. And it'll go through those side little holes and those little teeny holes is what gets clogged. Let's see if I can push it back up through there. The wire is so thin and delicate And it'll have a hole on one side and it'll have a hole on the other side. It's hard to line it up. Sometimes if it won't push through like I just had it before I dropped it, uh, you gotta punch through one side and then go back around and flip it and do the other side as well. And it's hard to see. There, we can see now. So it went, it went in one side and out the other. And it's just, you wanna be patient, just push that through there. And just keep straightening up that wire. If this piece of wire gets, you know, burned out, like gets too beat up, then just grab another one. So we went through the one, let's go through another one. And we've got that one, so let's go down, cause it looks like there's three here. That's clean, so that's two. And it looks like there's one on the bottom. That's three there. And then on the side, there's only one. So you got three in a row, top to bottom. And then if you spin it to the side, you've got one that goes through there. And it's, it's hard to see, it's just one by itself. Let's see if I can get this up inside there. Yeah, my wire's starting to get a little beat up. I'm gonna try to straighten it one more time before I retire it. Okay, so we're through. So now we just really got to run one of these all the way through the top and the bottom. And 
and I see light through there. So let's try this other thicker wire real quick. I think it's, it's a little too big for this jet. And while we got those hole, those side holes clean, let's go ahead and just blast them with some cleaner. Blast up the bottom and you should see it squirt out. You can see it right there, squirt. I don't want to hit the camera, but you can see. So all those jets are squirting out as they should. So we got that clean. We're going to lay that to the side. Remember, we've got our float bowl that's already nice and clean. It's been drying in the sun. And I'm going to spray a little bit more up in here. And you got one more jet. It's right in the middle. Man, that, that one might be just pressed in. Let me see. If not, you need a super small screwdriver. Yeah, there's a little jet. Let me get a little teeny screwdriver and we'll get that one out too and clean it. Okay, and we've got one more jet. You can see it's right next to where we took the big jet out. We took the big jet out from right in the middle of this carb. And that's right where your slide, your needle slide from your throttle goes in and out of that. And that's what is letting the air and the gas go. So you take, we took the big, huge uh, jet out of the middle and there's a little teeny one next to the right. And I can try to show you guys, get up and close with that. So we've got the big jet that was in here, right in the middle. And you've got this other little teeny jet next to it. And this jet actually can come apart into two. But we went ahead and cleaned it. And you can see, we've got the holes there, they're clean. You can see through it got a little teeny screwdriver and there's a little jet right here that we're going to take out and, it, and they're not even really tight I think someone's been in this unit before and you can see how tiny that little teeny thing is it's got a little teeny hole in it so let's get you guys set back up and we're going to run our wire back through that one as well all right, we're gonna run wire right through that other little jet that we just took out of the car. And I'm gonna try to use the big speaker wire first. It's such a small carburetor, it just won't even go. So I'm gonna go back to that stripped piece of wire that we've got and run it right up through that, that hole. You can barely see it. And you can see, and it was hard going in, so it had a little bit of crust in there, but you can see it, it's on the wire now. So let's just move it back and forth a few times. Okay, so the wire went through that. Let's go ahead and clean that one. Let's spray up into both of these jet areas. Let's get that back in there. That one's a, it's a tough one, it's very small. It's hard to get it started. Let me try a slightly longer screwdriver. See if I can get one that's magnetized. Yeah, I might have to take the gloves off for this one. This thing's so tiny and delicate. Uh, I got it started by hand there. And let's just tighten this up and snug it up. It felt a little loose before. Go ahead and spray your one main jet one more time. Go ahead and get that one up inside there. And let's tighten that with the screwdriver as well. And there's a float right here. Actually, we want to make sure the float's up inside there first before we tighten this back up. I had moved the float because uh, I wanted to show you guys this little needle valve up in there. actually up inside here 
right here where the screwdriver is and it goes up and down. And that's what lets your gas come in and out of this uh, bowl in the carburetor and your float goes like that and it pushes up against it. When there's more gas, it, it, it goes up. As it drops out, it lets more gas in. So this will totally shut it off. This will let the gas in. So let's get this like this. And then put our needle, our main jet in there. So get that started there. Okay, so we got the float up. Let's just go ahead and put our main jet back in there. Hold that. Let's go ahead and snug it down. It felt a little loose before. I'm gonna get one more glove on here. Everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit WD-40 up onto that main uh, pivot point on that float there. I think that's good. And we can install this float bowl back on there. And you just wanna match it up the same way it came off. Good to go. Let's get our, our screws back in here. Get that Phillips head screwdriver and we'll get these started. At least get the uh, get them kind of on there. Don't, don't tighten them all the way down. We want even pressure around this whole gasket when we tighten it. Two more to go. And I'm just getting them on there. I'm not, I'm not gonna snug them down just yet. And I'm gonna pinch that bowl nice and even, and I'm gonna get them, get them seated down on there. You just wanna snug them up, don't over tighten them. And I'm doing it in a crisscross pattern. I did the one on the bottom, and I went to the top. And I'll get the last one on the bottom, and I'm just snugging them up. So when I do my final torque, let's start off at the bottom. And go to the top at a crisscross pattern. Go back to the bottom here. I'm keeping pressure on that bowl nice and even. And let's go to the last one on the top. Good. So now we can get this uh, carburetor pushed back up on this manifold here. I'm going to go ahead and just spray a little bit of WD-40 right where they go together. It's not going to hurt anything. It'll, it'll go together and we'll tighten that clamp and seat it up nice. Throttle cable still hooked up. You can double check it. You hear the click. It's good. We didn't take any of the throttle cable out so we didn't have to mess with any of those gaskets breaking or going bad. Uh, we want the kids to ride today. So, uh, you know, we don't want to take, take as little bit apart as possible. Let's just get this thing seated back up on there. Boom, just like that. That WD-40 made it slide on nice and, and good. And we've just got that one bolt on that clamp. That's your, uh, your intake manifold clamp there. And you don't want to over tighten it, just snug it down. That's connected to the air filter. Air filter's good to go. Let's go ahead and Turn the gas back on this and see if we can get it running on the bench. Want to see if it'll run up here before we put it back down on the ground again. So uh, we're good, let's hit the choke. some action going and there's a little drain tube here that comes off the carburetor I'm just going to feed that back down through the back here just so it doesn't pop out let's double check that Okay, so we got the carburetor put back together. Everything's been cleaned in there. We didn't mess with the float. The needle valve seemed to be springing back and forth. The spark plug's clean. We can always clean that and replace that later. We've got oil full, uh, your two cycle oil injection in here. We've got a two cycle mix in here, but really this bike takes regular gasoline in here, non-mixed, and it self mixes with this tank. 
I put a mix in here just to double up on the amount of oil that's in this motor before we see it, uh, the level and making sure that the inj oil injector is actually working. So let's go ahead and try to start this up. I don't see anything. I rerouted the overflow drain tube that goes, goes to the drain tube if you want to drain this ball. And I think everything's on. The only thing we're missing is the cover plate here. Let's get that on. And I made a little magic marker mark where the oil is so we can see if this oil is actually being used in the, in the motor when the, when the kid's driving around. And like I said, you wanna fill that oil up. It's probably every other, or maybe every three times you fill this gas tank, but you wanna keep up on that oil injector. If you don't put oil in there and you're running straight gas in here, you're gonna blow this motor up. So let's go ahead and get it down on the ground and physically kick it. It's getting a little bit harder for me to kick. Uh, up on the, the stand here. We'll go ahead and put it on choke. See if she fires. It's actually in gear. Let's take it out of gear. This is a one one speed gear, so up is neutral, down is first, and that's all she's got. Take it off choke, it might not need it. It's pretty warm today. Let's see if it idles on its own. Seems to be idling, so uh, I'll take it for a quick test drive. some of it, fix it yourself, save that money. I'm not a pig, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs>